Good morning and welcome to the plenary's session for, when, for Thursday. We're on Thursday. Before we introduce our speaker today, I'm pleased to welcome three of our partner societies to present their awards. First, I invite Harui Masuda of the Geochemical Society of Japan to present the 2018 Geochemical Journal Award. Harui? Thank you very much for introducing me. As a representative of Geochemical Society of Japan, it is honor for me to present the uh, award of Geochemical Journal. Geochemical Journal is our society's journal and one of the international journal concerning with geochemical world. So this is really good chance for us to represent you this award. The, to, this year's recipient is Wakaki, um, Dr. Wakaki, and please come here. The Geochemical Journal Award of 2018. The Geochemical Journal Award is presented annually to the authors of the most understanding paper appeared in the Geochemical Journal during the previous year. The 2018 award is given to Shigeyuki Wakaki, Hajime Obata, Hirofumi Tazoe, and Tsuyoshi Ishikawa for their most understanding paper entitled Precise and Accurate Analysis of Deep and Surface Seawater Strontium Stable Isotopic Composition by Double Spike Thermal Ionization Mass Spectrometry, published in Geochemical Journal, Volume 51, 227 to 239 pages. Harue Masuda, pres President of the Geochemical Society of Japan, August 2018. And also, Thank you very much. Next, I would like to invite Wei Dong Sun, who will present the 2018 Shen Su Sun Award. Thank you, Roberta. And uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Wei Dong Sun from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, currently, I serve as the secretary of the Shen Su Sun Foundation. The Shen Su Sang Award uh, is designed to recognize outstanding young scientists under 40 years of age who works in mainland China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. This year's Shen Su Sang Award goes to Professor Chiu Li Li uh, because of his contribution in in situ analysis. Uh, he's currently in charge of the uh, SIEMS lab at the Institute of Geology and Geophysics in Beijing, the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, he had two 1280, a Kameka 1280 um, mass spectrometers. And he did lots of work on datings with different uh, accessory minerals. So, Chiu Li, let's uh, join me to <laughs> congratulate. Thank you. 
Finally, I invite Jacinta Ensweiler to present the International Association of Geoanalysts 2018 Young Scientist Award. Thank you, Roberta. Good morning, everybody. Each year at Goldschmidt, uh, the International Association of Geoanalysts dispenses the Young Scientist Award for Excellence in Analytical Geochemistry. Eligibility is limited to scientists who are currently pursuing a higher degree in a field related to geoanalysis or who have completed their university education within the past five years. The award promotes the careers of young scientists who have either developed innovative analytical methods or provided new strategies to improve data quality as applied to the chemical analysis of geological or environmental samples. Alicia Cruz Uribe is the recipient of the 2018 Young Scientist Award. Alicia received her PhD degree from Pennsylvania State University in 2014 and presently is in her fourth year as the Edward Sturgis Grew uh, Assistant Professor of Petrology and Mineralogy at the University of Maine. One of the primary focuses of her research is the geochemical connection between the metamorphism that occurs in the subducted ocean crust and the geochemistry of arc volcanoes to understanding the geochemical fingerprint of subduction. She is particularly interested in single element thermometry and quantifying the spatial and temporal scales of equilibrium in metamorphic rocks. Alicia has developed a technique for analyzing titanium in quartz by laser ablation ICPMS and has published papers using a wide variety of analytical techniques. Her recent work includes combining laser ablation ICPMS, analysis of trace elements, and with seams analysis of sulfur and iso oxygen isotopes in silicates and sulfides. In doing so, she hopes to constrain the composition and evolution of fluids produced during the volatilization of subducting slabs. She is also the head of the new microanalytical geochemistry and isotope center at the University of Maine. I am pleased to welcome Alicia to receive her certificate. I think we should have one more round of applause for these three very talented young scientists. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the co-chair of this year's uh, Goldschmidt Conference, Steve Parman, who will be introducing the plenary speaker. All right, so today's plenary will be presented by Professor Fumio Inagaki, Deputy Director of the Research and Development Center for Ocean Drilling Science and the Kochi Institute for Core Sample Research, both at the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology, otherwise known as JAMSTEC. Uh, Professor Inagaki is one of the, war, uh, one of the foremost geomicrobiologists working today, having made remarkable contributions to our understanding of the deep subsea floor biosphere. He helped design the CHICU, the most modern drilling vessel for geochemical and geomicrobiology ocean science currently in service, and has developed important new techniques for ocean drilling. Please join me in welcoming him to the Goldschmidt 2018.
All right, first of all, uh, I'd like to say big thanks to Stephen Shuhei and other uh, organizers of GoSchmidt Boston 2018 for giving me a great opportunity to talk about the, some sub C4 biosphere. And uh, I'm very pleased, honored, and excited uh, to be here. Thank you very much. On this screen, uh, there are many, many green dots. Uh, this green dot represents the micro microbial life uh, buried in the uh, marine sediment. And uh, each dot uh, represents the uh, very tiny, tiny small life, and the size is uh, only 100 to 500 nanometers in, in diameter. So very tiny. And nevertheless, uh, the latest estimate of the uh, global number of sub microorganisms in sediment uh, is 2.9 times 10 to the 29 cells, uh, which is big. And uh, this uh, number accounts for the 4 gigaton of biomass carbon on Earth. And uh, this number is huge, uh, especially when uh, we compare the number with, uh, to the uh, number of stars in the universe, which is 10 to the 24th. Therefore, the sub for life, uh, in fact, a five or four order magnitude higher. Uh, so, that like a universe, there are so many mysteries uh, hidden in deep subsurface interior of the Earth. This is uh, uh, my story. Then, uh, what is the nature of extent of the deep sub seafloor biosphere? Uh, I would like to go back to the first look of the deep sub seafloor biosphere, uh, which is uh, published in Deep Sea Air Research in 1955. Uh, the script researchers, Richard Mor Professor Moritor and the Zobel, uh, organized the cruise, uh, starting from the San Diego across the Hawaii and the Bikini Island, and uh, they took uh, eight meters uh, piston course uh, along the, uh, this transect. And then they conducted a very careful culture-dependent uh, uh, study at the time, uh, using a core sediment and studies of microbial life. And in this article, they describe all available evidence points to a slow continuous activity of the bacteria in eight meters sediment, and concluded that, uh, that we have reached the lower limits of the biosphere. After 40 years uh, since uh, uh, Moritz and Zobel publications, uh, in 1994, uh, British uh, researchers John Parks and Barry Clark and their colleagues published a striking paper in Nature. Uh, at the time I was a graduate student, and I was very much shocked by reading this paper, uh, showing that the over 10 to the fifth or 10 to the sixth cells per cubic centimeter microorganism present uh, in the sediments down to the 800 meter below the sea floor, uh, which is two order magnitude deeper than the previous uh, estimate. So, and uh, importantly, uh, this microbial population uh, decreasing uh, logarithmically with depth, and at the time, uh, the profile didn't reach at the bottom of the biosphere. And uh, what role does deep microbial life play global geochemistry, uh, which is very important questions. And what types of mi microbial life are living there? In order to tackle these fundamentally important scientific questions, uh, in 2002, the Ocean Dream Program Link 201 was organized by Professor Steve Stone at URI and Boric Jorgensen at Max Planck Institute in Bremen at the time. And um, uh, that, uh, this expedition, ODP Link 201, was the first deep biosphere dedicated scientific ocean dwelling. I was very much uh, lucky enough to be able to join and jumped on uh, this expedition and uh, participated in the ODP Language 201 on the US during based joyous resolution. And uh, the, we sailed, um, uh, we sailed uh, uh, from San Diego to Peru, uh, Palo Paraiso, and, uh, and uh, drill the sediment uh, uh, at the eastern equatorial Pacific and offshore Peru margins, seven site. And uh, sometimes the sediment produces a lot of hydrogen sulfide, uh, which is dangerous, toxic, but also the, the thing, uh, the, the hydrogen sulfide is uh, the microbes are actively working, happily working in the sediment. And uh, during this expedition, so we uh, confirmed that the microorganisms are present uh, in sediment throughout the, uh, uh, the sediment, sediment column from the seafloor down to the basement. 
and they're doing anaerobic respiration, uh, which impact influenced on uh, the pore water geochemistry. And also, their energy and the nutrient substrate are supplied from the overlying seawater and uh, uh, the underlying basaltic basement. So my strong motivation at the time uh, to participate in the ODP Lang 201 was to study the biogeographical distribution and diversity in the uh, subsea flora biosphere, the community structures. And uh, I extracted DNA from the frozen coral sediments, the most inner part, uh, the coral from ODP Lang 201 and also the ODP Lang 204. Offshore is a cascade margin and, uh, and uh, the extracts the DNA and the sequence them and study what kind of microbes are living there. And shortly speaking, the microbes are generally uh, similar uh, at one site. However, it's slightly different along with depth, meaning that the microbial communities are stratified. And uh, when we compare the um, community structure between other, uh, you know, the multiple sites, uh, we see that the community structure is slightly different uh, when the geochemistry and the sedimentology characteristics are different. And uh, after 10, or t uh, 10 years or even more, uh, the, our uh, DNA sequencing technique and culture-independent molecular analysis uh, techniques have been vastly improved, and we now know that the phylogenetically diverse but physiologically unknown microbes are present in deep subsea for sedimentary biosphere. And importantly, uh, some microbes living in the deep subsurface are evolutionally far distinct from the microbes living on the surface world, like soil or forest on a planet, which is important. And how does the uh, marine deep biosphere interplay with other ecosystem. Uh, to date, uh, the distribution of photosynthetic primary production can be beautifully visualized uh, based on the on-site observatory satellite information, uh, which shows us the, uh, the, the photosynthetic microbes uh, uh, distributed along the sea current and also uh, the associated with a planetary system like a sunlight uh, power or or something else. Likewise, the uh, distribution of sub C4 sedimentary biomass is tightly associated with the available energy source, uh, the organic matter basically, uh, which derives from the, uh, the seawater photosynthetic product, uh, product productivity. And then uh, the marginal sediment, uh, the organic, organic leach hide sedimentation late area, the sediment however are much more abundant uh, microorganisms than the open ocean organic pore sediment. And the, uh, in order to study the nature of subsea life in the open ocean environment, uh, Stephen Daunt and I uh, organized the, the Integrated Ocean Drain Program, uh, Expedition 329, and uh, the, again, so we sailed uh, on the joint resolution and uh, the, the starting from the Tahiti and uh, we recovered uh, seven uh, core sediment and basalt uh, from seven sites uh, across the, uh, the center of this uh, South Pacific area. The Jaira Heart, this is a kind of desert of the ocean uh, and there is almost no photosynthetic primary production and uh, sometimes we could see highly, you know, the desert shark uh, swimming there. It is the bluest ocean. And uh, the soon after the coral recovery, uh, we measure the dissolved oxygen uh, concentration of pore water in the sediment and uh, took uh, many microbiology and uh, biogeochemical, uh, biogeochemistry samples. And uh, in fact, the scientific ocean drilling is uh, wonderful uh, because it's inter truly international and interdisciplinary exploration. So microbiologists, biogeochemists, and geologists, and mineralogists, and sedimentologists, they are working all together um, aim for the, the one purpose to, you know, the clarify the subsea for a biosphere. And in fact, uh, this slide shows the uh, Tim Federman at Max Planck uh, Bremen, uh, Jens Kalamir, GFZ, and Yuki Morono in my group, and uh, they're uh, working all together uh, in the cold room on um, the Joyce resolution, and the working activity is 12 hours per scientist per day, uh, which is very active. 
And uh, the, uh, as a result, uh, we observe the high concentration of dissolved oxygen uh, in sediment from the seafloor down to the basement, over 100 micromolar of oxygen sometimes present. And uh, the, based on this finding, uh, the uh, Monte Carlo simulation indicates that say, up to 37% of the global ocean is completely aerobic, and the other, uh, other region is anaerobic. Uh, so that's the, the subsea floor biosphere consists mainly of aerobic and anaerobic biospheres. In, uh, in addition to that, uh, we also observe the tiny, tiny microbial cells again uh, over 10 to the third to 10 to the fifth cells per cubic centimeter uh, throughout the sediment column. Uh, this indicates that there is no limits to microbial life in open ocean sedimentary environment. This is very important conclusion. And uh, even in 110, uh, no, even the 100 million year old, very old South Pacific gyre sediment, uh, we see some microorganisms are actively living there, which is also amazing. And uh, based on these observations, the global map of these, uh, the sedimentary redox distribution can be updated uh, recently. And uh, the, not only the anaerobic and uh, aerobic biosphere, uh, there are some places where the sulfate penetrates the entire sediment column between the aerobic and anaerobic biosphere. The sulfate reduction in the deep biosphere is extremely important, but, but it contributes to the global sulfur cycling. And uh, the neural network analysis uh, based on the measured sulfate concentration and sulfate reduction rate uh, also uh, visualize the global distribution of microbial sulfate reductions. So based on this um, study, so approximately 29% of the buried organic matter uh, will be uh, oxidized with uh, microbial sulfate reduction in the deep sedimentary biosphere, which is uh, very important. Then, uh, given those uh, exploration and uh, the measurement and uh, the modeling study uh, indicates uh, the deep subsea floor biosphere interact uh, with surface world on the planet and may play important ecological role in the global elemental cycling. Then, how are microbial communities linked to redox condition in marine sedimentary environment at the planetary scale? is remained to be a, an explored. In order to tackle this again, so I would like to show the global map of aerobic and anaerobic biosphere. We extracted DNA from deep frozen core sediment accumulated over the past decade uh, from roughly uh, 200 sample uh, from 40 different uh, sites at various oceanographic locations and studied uh, our microbial community structures based on the DNA sequencing technology. And uh, the, this slide shows uh, a new uh, multi-dimensional scaling analysis of the, the community structures, uh, basically, and each dot represents the, the microbial community composition. And, uh, uh, and uh, the, these microbial or community structures uh, can be uh, clearly distinguishable uh, into the aerobic and anaerobic communities. And also the uh, canonical corresponding analysis, the statistic uh, analysis uh, also uh, reveals that these uh, aerobic and anaerobic communities are highly influenced by the presence and absence of oxygen, uh, sulfate, and the TOC concentration. But the depth function is a kind of neutral or uh, constraining factor for the microbial community structures. In addition, uh, using the same samples, uh, we study the distribution and abundance of archaea in the sedimentary biosphere. And uh, using the uh, microfluidic data PCR technique, uh, we concluded that 37.3% the of the uh, microorganisms are archaea, and the archaea uh, fluxion is uh, in, in marginal and aerobic sediment is much higher than the open ocean sediment. Therefore, archaea fluxion uh, may be uh, associated with not only the presence or absence of oxygen, but also the uh, water column or buried quality of organic matter or pressure, uh, but uh, it, it, it still needs uh, further examination. 
What are key factors that limit the unarabic deep biosphere on the Pacific margins? In order to tackle this question, uh, in 2012, uh, Kai Henrich, uh, University of Bremen, and I organized the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program Expedition 67, uh, which was the first laser drilling microbiology expedition targeting deeply buried corvette in the ocean. So we dealt site C12A uh, offshore the uh, Shimokita Peninsula of Japan. Uh, the water depth is approximately 1.2 kilometers and uh, using the, uh, the laser drilling vessel CHIQ, uh, at the time uh, we extended the wall depth record of scientific ocean drilling down to uh, 2.5 kilometers and obtained the over uh, 2,000 deep biosphere sample for the microbiology and biogeochemistry investigations. So soon after the coral recovery, uh, we processed the fresh coral through the X-ray CT scan on board, uh, which provided us a very useful information without coral uh, destruction, and it shows a beautiful uh, the mudstone deformation plus some, uh, some mineral precipitation, in this case, pyrite associated with uh, lignite coal bed. And uh, the numerous uh, data obtained from this expedition and a multiple line of evidence like geochemistry, sedimentology, microbiology indicates that the microbial life is present uh, even down to 2.5 kilometers below the ocean floor and may play important uh, biogeochemical role in carbon cycling. Uh, for example, the, the microbial cell population is sharply dropped at around 1.2 to 1.5 kilometer, uh, very low around here, but at uh, the two to three order magnitude higher in coal bed, which makes sense because the coal bed contains a high uh, energy substrate. When we look at the carbon and uh, the hydrogen isotopic composition of methane, uh, which measured on board, and, and uh, as well as the, the clumped isotope topologue of methane and the CO2 carbon isotope and the C1, C2 ratio, all these uh, geochemical uh, data uh, indicates that the microbes are functioning in situ, and that this is a heterotrophic ecosystem uh, is, uh, ongoing and they generate organic matter and they produce CO2 via C hydrogen trophic CO2 reduction. In addition, uh, the another evidence came from the biomarker analysis. So, so our team uh, could su uh, successfully extract the intact form of factor 430 from the two kilometer coal bed samples, uh, which is a leaf biomarker of uh, methanogenesis the component of uh, methyl coenzyme M reductase, which is essential component for methanogenesis. And actually this uh, intact form of factor 430 is very fragile. So immediately epimelized after cell death, therefore uh, this is one of the strong evidence uh, for the occurrence of uh, micro, um, methanogen uh, in there. And uh, we uh, also uh, studies the taxonomic compositions uh, of the indigenous bacterial communities and uh, compare the com uh, composition in shallow sediment and deep sediment. Shallow means down to 664 meters below the seafloor already. But see, the, in shallow sediments, uh, the microbial, microbes are very typical sedimentary uh, bacteria, like a, as a members within the chloroflexiae or actinobacteria. But on the other hand, the deeper sediment harbors the remarkably different uh, microbes. Uh, the chloroflexia almost nothing, uh, where we see uh, some actinobacteria, proteos, and uh, firmicutes, and these are resemble to the microbes living in a freshwater environment like soil or forest. But it makes sense because uh, 20 million years ago, uh, this environment, the depositional system is lack strain of freshwater environment and uh, there, there are peat or some, uh, the, some uh, forest uh, to uh, make a coal bed. Uh, so that if uh, this scenario, scenario is correct, these microbes are just buried and are sitting there over geologic time. And uh, uh, the nanosims, the narrow scale secondary ion mass spectrometry is a very, very powerful tool for microbial ecology. Of course, I, we know that this is very powerful too for many other geochemical measurements, but the geochemistry and the microbiology is coupling uh, to date. 
So we uh, added the, the, uh, the stable, uh, stable isotope level substrate, like a 13C, 15N, and due to level uh, compounds uh, into the sediment slurry, or the directory sediment and incubated it. And then after the incubation, we separated the cell from the samples and then mounted onto the membrane and then investigate the element composition with nanosems. And uh, this so-called SIP nanosems technique reviewed that the over 70% of deep microbes are indeed alive and revivable. Uh, and uh, uh, they are not so healthy because of patchy incorporation, but at least they are, live. they are living in there. Even in two kilometer coal and shell bed, uh, we observe the farm evidence that there are some living microorganisms in, in such a deep, great depths and they're incorporating some substrate, in this case, uh, uh, 13C labeled methylamine uh, or methanol, and they're taking such a methyl compound and utilize it uh, for both catabolic and anabolic reactions. And uh, we also calculated the turnover rates based on uh, the atomic incorporation of 15N and deuterium into the biomers, and it shows the, the turnover rate uh, ranged from several months to over 100 years, at least uh, in the laboratory conditions. In nature, probably much longer time. Given those uh, observations and data, uh, the professor Borbrucker Jongensen at the Arthur University uh, made a wonderful statement, deep subsiform microbial cells on physiological standby and in a very low energy subsurface world, which is very much different to the high energy world uh, where we are living, uh, intact bacterial cells and their genome may survive for millions of years in deep marine sediment. This is exciting. Are they cultivable? Which is a question because, you know, their slow, slow life, the deep life is slow life and then can we wait for sleeping beauty? It is very critical because, uh, you know, that we cannot live over 200, 300 years. <laughs> and uh, we, I cannot ask postdoc, for example, to you know, wait for them. Then it is critical, <laughs> you know. But uh, the downhanging sponge and uh, bioreactor system is very much useful and powerful too for uh, cultivating uh, microbes. Uh, this, thing, this system is completely anaerobic inside and uh, just see water drops slowly and uh, the, after several months the microbes are a little bit stimulated and then activated. Oh, this is maybe a good world and after 100 or several hundred days later that they are, you know, oh, this is a new paradise and there are a lot of foods and the juicy stuff and they start eating the corbett again and then uh, we see many, many uh, healthy glowing cells after several hundred days uh, bioreactor incubations. And uh, this community is very useful for microbiological studies and also we, get, uh, uh, we got uh, evidence of uh, methanogenesis and uh, hydrogenotrophic uh, CO2 reduction uh, such as methanobacterium species uh, from the deep, uh, uh, deep uh, biosphere Corbett samples. In addition to the bacteria and the archaea, uh, uh, also, diverse forest derived fungi are isolated uh, from 20 million year old lignite coal bed. I, I think uh, this is uh, surprising because the eukaryote, uh, this might be buried as spores and uh, survive, or uh, the uh, trees have the ability to revive uh, after 20 million years. And uh, surprisingly, the mushroom, so we could, our multiple labs start cultivating mushroom from the two, 200 million years old old sediment samples. This mushroom is a well-known wood decay uh, mushroom living in forest. So that is surprising, but I don't want to eat this mushroom, <laughs> by the way. The culturing is brilliant. The microbiology can do more. And uh, that they have been waiting for a over geologic time and uh, waiting for scientists, actually. And uh, what factors are constraining the extent of the deep biosphere uh, because uh, we see a sharp drop of biomers uh, as the Shimokita coal bed is approaching to the, the bottom of the biosphere. So this slide shows the, the, uh, some comp 
uh, compiled data of cell count. We obtained so far over the past decade, and it's clearly as a cell abundance is uh, associated with the availability of buried organic matter and uh, depth functions such as age and pressure, temperature, porosity, permeability, and so on. And the question is, why it sharply dropped? So one of the conceivable uh, environmental factor uh, may be temperature. So because uh, when we go deep, uh, the temperature is also increased and uh, the, if the, the in-situ temperature is over 40 or 50 degrees C is, uh, or more, the energy requirement for biomolecule damage fixation also increases with temperature in situ. So for example, the amino acid elastomization or DNA hydrolysis, which are very critical for maintenance of life, uh, but they have to use energy, uh, energy to fix them. And if there is no additional supply of energy uh, in the geosystem, so the cell population, cell abundance must be sharply dropped. In addition, uh, when we studied the lignite coal bed, uh, it was surprisingly dry. Uh, the, the, the scientists tried to squeeze the coal bed, but they could get only a few drops of precious pore water. Uh, and uh, it's very difficult to measure the pore water geochemistry but they might be very thirsty, right? So our body is almost over 90% of our body is consists of water. So if they are too thirsty, it's critical for our life population. This is also another factor. So the deep water is very important. So, so uh, through the investigation of mud, submarine mud volcano, uh, we drilled uh, uh, 200 meters below the, uh, the, the mud volcano summit. Uh, so we observed the supply of geogenic water uh, so through the smectite elite reactions, abiotic processes uh, in the, uh, the old acronition prism, uh, uh, supports the, um, the catabolic reaction, the methanogenesis in the bottom of the, uh, the basin, uh, the fork basin. So this is very important for the, how, how such a biogenic gas reserve form, and uh, I think also uh, uh, important uh, with regard to that the, um, the deep biosphere beneath the ocean might be constrained by water because our planet uh, surface is covered with 70% uh, of the, our planet is covered with ocean, but uh, beneath the sea floor, the deep biosphere constrained by water. It's very important, I think. And uh, what is the temperature limits of the deep subsea floor biosphere? We have to investigate more. And uh, in order to address these important questions, uh, in 2016, uh, we organized uh, uh, International Ocean Discovery Program, Expedition 370, so called T-Limit Project. So the co-chief scientist, uh, the Belen Hauer, Yuki Morono, and me, and uh, we studied uh, this site, the Nankai Trap Subduction Zone, Proto Thrust Zone, actually, uh, which is uh, 150 kilometers uh, far from the Kote city and uh, Cape Muroto. And uh, this site was previously drilled by ODP expeditions and a well known area of the high heat flow. The temperature gradient is high in this area. Then uh, I'd like, uh, uh, like to show. Uh, the, what we are doing uh, and what we are aiming for uh, with a short video. Only a few decades ago, marine scientists made a surprising discovery. Life in the ocean extends deep into the subsea floor in the form of microbes. At first, scientists doubted their abundance deep in the sediment, where energy and nutrients are scarce. Thanks to nearly 50 years of scientific ocean drilling, we now know that they might exist here as much as in the water column. But how deep can they thrive? And what are the conditions in the deep biosphere that ultimately limit microbial life? On September the 13th, 2016, IODP Expedition 370 set sail to drill a special site of high heat flow in the Nankai Trough. Special because here, beneath 4.8 kilometers of water, 
The geothermal gradient is steep enough for scientists to access a temperature horizon so high that it could prove fatal to ocean organisms. These cores will help scientists determine the depth limit of life, as well as the overall influence of temperature on microbial communities. Hypothermophiles can survive in temperatures nearing 120 degrees Celsius. These microorganisms thrive in the energy-rich conditions of hydrothermal vents. Down in the subsea floor, however, the energy required to support cell repair is in short supply. In the hopes of tapping the bottom of the biosphere, the IODP scientists drilled down to this currently observed temperature limit of 120 degrees Celsius, 1200 meters into the sea floor. Since IODP's last visit to this area, analytical methods have greatly improved. This work requires advanced lab spaces equipped with cutting-edge technology, which can be found at the Kochi Core Center, just a helicopter flight away. Here, shore-based scientists receive fresh core samples for in-depth microbiological investigations and conduct time-sensitive analysis using cutting-edge technologies. The microbial story can be found in the sediment, but to better characterize the thermal regime of the subsea floor at these critical depths, the scientists installed a temperature sensor string down the borehole, allowing them to continuously monitor temperature in real time. After two months out at sea, 112 cores, 13,000 samples for analysis, and temperature monitoring in full swing, the Chikyu successfully completed its mission. Now, these scientists are well on their way to finding the limits of life deep in the ocean. Uh, to explore the limits of biosphere, it is very important. QAQC, the quality assurance and quality control is a challenging mission. And uh, the, it needs preparation and we set up the uh, geomicrobiology super clean room at the coach core center beforehand. And uh, so we uh, build up the, the working super clean room and uh, always, always the air is very clean, no particles, no airborne, no, air, no airborne, the particle counter shows always zero, uh, even at the 0 0.3 uh, micrometer particles, and which enable us to do some change of limits of life study. And uh, this slide uh, shows the, the microscopic slide, a view. And uh, can you see life here? Here, the, the only lonely, lonely, slowly uh, uh, mi uh, microbes, uh, single cells are sitting here. So during this uh, expedition, our minimum detection limit was four cells per cubic, cubic centimeter of sediment. And the minimum quantification limit was 16 cells per cubic centimeter of sediment with two order magnitude statistic confidence. This is very, very accurate uh, technique. In addition, uh, during the expedition, we installed a temperature sensor to monitor the in-situ temperature down to 800 meters uh, as the decomet. And we confirmed, uh, after 1.5 years later, so we confirmed that the in-situ temperature is exactly correct that we predicted. As, uh, at the decomet, 800 meters, the temperature was 90 degrees C, and the at, at the bottom of the sediment, the, uh, the, the sediment uh, basalt interface, the temperature reached as 120 degrees C. So we are now drilled as a light place. And uh, the, as the video shows, that today uh, many scientists all over the world are working on the sample obtained from this project, uh, including high pressure temperature incubation, and we study the limits. Uh, what is the limiting factor? What is the limits of life in this particular geological setting? 
Then uh, towards uh, closing my talk, uh, I, I'd like a little bit uh, discuss uh, more about the, uh, uh, what, what are the next question uh, for the deep subsea for our biosphere. In my perspect, perspective, it would be very interesting to address uh, how is the deep biosphere evolution associated with plate tectonics and mantle convections? And uh, more simply speaking, is plate tectonics requi required for life? I think this is uh, very important because the plate tectonics is unique on Earth and uh, you know, this is important from the astrobiological point of view also. Then the, this slide shows a global map of uh, igneous basement age. And it has been proposed that the, the, the water lock interaction and the relatively young oceanic basalts uh, 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 the, after the 10 million years, uh, such a, a reaction may support microbial life in the oceanic crust. And indeed, uh, we studied the uh, uh, basaltic core uh, obtained from the Van der Fuka Rich Frank and during the uh, IODP expedition 301, uh, the 3 million year age young oceanic basalt, and uh, carbon, sulfur, isotopic composition, as well as molecular data uh, consistently shows the occurrence of microbial community within the small fracture veins, and uh, that they are contributing to the, the carbon and the sulfur cycling in situ environment. In the, even such a rocky habitat. However, so we, we still don't know the how, what is the, you know, how, how such a cluster of biosphere widespread all over the world, including 50 million years or 100 million years. We still don't know that because the open ocean sediment, uh, no limits of life, but what about underlying the sediment? Uh, we still don't know. We need to be explored uh, in the future. And how will deep biosphere evolution shape our planet in the deep future? Uh, of course, talking about the future, uh, we need a computer analysis, computer-based analysis from present, from past, present, and future. Uh, then, so recently, the I, a high-resolution 3D mental convection model uh, reported that the, the supercontinent Amazia uh, will be formed after 250 million years later from now on. And uh, I think Amazia is amazing, right? <laughs> then how will and one continent, one ocean system shape the planetary habitability of Earth? So are there any is there some simulation study? I think we should do that. Uh, or vice versa, the how microbial life shape the Earth uh, around the trajectory of such a mantle convection and plate tectonics. I think uh, this is a, a very fascinating uh, question. And uh, in conclusion, to know more about deep life and the deep time of planet Earth, I strongly believe that the uh, deep understanding of the mantle is key. And a scientific ocean drilling uh, will be able to contribute to this uh, adventure and uh, will gain some new insight into the deep life, deep carbon, deep time, including the deep future. And uh, then I would like to acknowledge uh, many, many, many Koreans, friends all over the world uh, since ODP Link 201, 2002, offshore the Peru merging. And uh, ODP, IODP expedition 329 of the South Pacific Jare. And IODP expedition 337, uh, Shimokita Corbett Biosphere on the GQ. And the IODP expedition C70 T limit, uh, and of course uh, uh, Jamstec Koji Call Center member and Ocean Doing Science Department staff, and uh, many wonderful colleagues in my laboratory, and uh, captain, crews, and technicians, the leaders on the majestic drilling vessel CQ and Joyless Resolution and other research vessels, and of course the funding agency. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Fumio. Uh, we have time for questions. There is uh, a couple of microphones. I think there's one in the front. Oh. There's one in the front and one in the back. Uh, so if you have a question, please uh, come to the center aisle. You've been able to uh, show us uh, samples with a, a wide variety of uh, uh, quantity of uh, uh, microorganisms. Have you 
has the research of the scientific community gotten to the point where we've looked at enough samples that without microorganisms in the deep sub subsurface to uh, say that we've bracketed the problem is that we have reached the limit and gone beyond. Yes, uh, this is a very, thank you very much for the question. This is very much important point and, and uh, this is what we're uh, doing right now uh, through the T-limit expeditions. We are willing to verify no biosignatures, but the, the, to verify the absence of life Lifeless environment is very difficult. We need a multiple evidence a multi from the multiple angle of experimentation, including biogeochemistry, microbiology, and the physical properties. And this is what we are doing right now. Thank you. Yep, back there, sir. So, um, do I need that? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you mentioned these uh, microbes in stasis, but surely they must be reproducing at some reasonable rate mm -hmm. because otherwise radiation damage and, and other forms of damage would accumulate in the cells and make them not viable. So what do you, what do you think the rate at which they're reproducing is? It can't be 10 million, one every 10 million years. <laughs> Yes, this is one of the mysteries in the deep biosphere research field. The microbes are taking only a several tens electron per cell per day, which is extremely slow activity, slow metabolism. And they maintain somehow the essential life function, like a DNA damages, but we still don't know what is the turnover rate of the cells and what it, how many times they divided and uh, you know the, the ancestor or something. We still don't know it. So we need to do some more work. Um, I just had a question regarding some of the carbon uh, isotope data they had in methane. Yes. Um, is there possibly a deeper thermogenic source in this area that could be migrating up and you're just observing methanotrophy taking place on that rather than active methanogenesis occurring there? You kind of were like at next, negative 60 per mil or so. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, thanks for the important questions. So the, for the, the methane origins, so it might be mixed, as you said, the uh, biogenic origin plus uh, thermogenic origins, but it, it has to be carefully assessed with multiple angles. So we perform the cramped isotope methane, uh, the, suggesting the roughly 70 uh, degrees C plus minus 10, uh, but it's slightly higher than the in situ temperature. And the other studies also, you know, 30 degrees C, it clearly shows the biogenic, primarily the methane is produced by biogenic processes, but so it might be, you know, the, uh, some uh, near equilibrium or, you know, some mix with thermogenic gas. Uh, we still don't know that. Uh, but uh, so when we evaluate the system, uh, like a geology and a microbiology and other uh, molecular evidence, all points to the notion that the microbes are working uh, in situ. Uh, so that's the this is what we know, but uh, of course, uh, there's some mixed origin if possible. All right, is there one more question? Going once, going twice. All right, well, let us thank our speaker again for an amazing talk. <laughs> All right, and uh, now let's have lunch. <laughs>